Hey, travelers, do you want to save money on your next flight? Then pick up the phone and call. That's right, call, because the best prices are not online. They're with SmartFares. See, SmartFares has special deals with the airlines. When they have unsold seats, they use SmartFares to fill them. So you get airline tickets at ridiculously low prices. Our prices are too low to publish online. With the extra money you'll save, you can book another trip or treat yourself to dinner or shopping. So stop searching all of those travel sites to find the lowest price on your next flight. Let one of our SmartFares expert travel agents find ridiculously low prices for you. Call SmartFares today and get the best price on your next flight. Guaranteed. Also, save up to 50% off business and first class tickets. 800-871-3291. 800-871-3291. Again, that's 800-871-3291. The following is a live copyrighted presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now for Radiolawtalk.com with your host, Frederick Penny, attorney at law. And now... Radiolawtalk.com. Welcome to Radio Law Talk this beautiful Saturday, November the 11th, 2020. Or January 11th. Ah, uh, January 11th, yeah. <laughs> what did I say? November. Oh, November, <laughs> November. Oh my I know we're depends. going by fast, but... But you know what? I saw the 11th. So I Jan- think we're using the Napoleonic calendar. <laughs> January 11th, 2020. If you missed the first hour, that is your fault. And it was the most exciting, fun, entertaining hour. Uh, now that we're coming off our caffeine high, um, it's going to be a little bit slower the next two hours. <laughs> but <laughs> And Denise will probably start talking more. She'll wake up. But it comes down to, look... If you want to hear what we just talked about, go to www.radiolawtalk.com, go to our podcast, and actually, you can actually click or search a term and find us talking about that term. If you want us to talk about uh, the Mars bar or Milky Way, uh, type in Milky Way and see if we talked about it. Um, Tweet us at Radio Law Talk, and uh, we're going to do a case or no case today. Cal has set it up. It's going to be an interesting one, something about... Uh, you told me it's cable. Somebody Monster cable. cable. Monster cable. Yes. So we're going to talk mm-hmm. about that. In case or no case, we're going to talk about the Michael Jackson lawsuit, Miley Cyrus case, Ikea lawsuits, Weinstein trials going on. There's a lot of interesting things to talk about the Weinstein trial, kind of the behind the scenes things that we think may be going on. That's If you read what's, what's happening, you, okay, I think this is what happened behind the scenes. Again, this is all anecdotal. Um, and we're going to have fun with it and discuss it. Um, remember, if if you want to uh, uh, chime in or, or say, here's a topic I want to talk about, you can email us during the week, and we receive emails. At Radio Law Talk. Yeah, info. 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 At RadioLawTalk.com. Right. That's exactly right, and that's what we do. So anyway, th- we've done all the anecdotal discussions in our first hour, so we can get right into case or no case anytime you want, Cal. This is no fun. I know. Now it's time to play Case or No Case. (laughs) All right. Monster Cable, the company that makes those inexplicably expensive cables that, if the truth were told, you know, do they work really better than just cheaper cables? Well, that's up for debate. Uh, And, you know, the ones that Best Buy employees try to push on you because there's a big profit margin in them. Good for them, right? It's called upselling. But here's the story. As soon as the movie Monster, Inc. began production, Monster Cable was all over their internal lawyers ordering them to go take on Pixar to get an injunction or to make some kind of a deal so they could get some cash because Monsters, Inc. used the name Monster in the title. But wait, there's more. They also went after another company called Blue Jeans Cable. See? Cable, see, that's the connective word there, and sought counsel because Monster Cable said Blue Jeans Cable is using the word cable in their company's name, and they can't, and we want an injunction to stop it, and we want damages, and so I'm going to ask you, I believe, let's see, it was uh, Fred is going to go first this time on our case 
or no case? What say you, Mr. Penn? Should I go fast? It's going to be a quick, easy answer. Sure, make yourself. The answer is yes, it's a, it's a case, and the, the words uh, cable and the words monster are generic in nature and can be used by anyone, and monster cable loses. Even if it's Monsters, Inc.? It doesn't matter. I'm not trying to talk you into anything. Okay. No? Mr. Kunin, what say you as far as case or no case? Well, I'm, uh, I am unapologetically in agreement with Fred. Uh, look, Monster is too generic. Cable is too generic. Now, putting them together, Monster Cable, certainly that refers to theirs. And if there's anybody out there that did that, they'd have a they'd have an issue. I'd, I'd be curious to know if they went after what? Monster House. That was the other animated film. That Anything used... that had Monster in yes. it, they were very aggressively going so, out after. So uh, I am going to say that is not a case. It sounds like something that some creative marketing team would do. Have we seen in the past these people that use the legal system as a marketing ploy filing complaints and it results in an increase in song sales. We can talk about that. You said this it's hour. no case. You and said... so I am going to say that it is a case, oh. but they don't recover anything. They, they, it's just deemed to be too generic. Case, no recovery for Monster Cable. Mm. All right, same as me. All right, Ms. Dirks, what say you? No case. That's okay. strategy. Uh, yeah, I'm picking up on that because. They both oh. said case, and you said no case. No case. And we said... I don't like to grin on Cal's face right now. <laughs> I, that, that is Denise the, uh... is smarter than us, you know, Todd. We thought... Jeez, we, uh, Louise. Well, for those of you who say it was a case, may I see? That would be Fred and Todd, to which to you I must say... Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All yeah. right. Denise. Don't leave me hanging, man. All Denise right. Denise was going to slap us I'm upside the today. Head. Here's, here's the interesting thing. Okay. Uh, I mean, the Monsters, Inc. case was summarily dismissed for the reasons that you guys pointed out. Oh, we did. But when they went after Blue Jeans Cable, they learned that Blue Jeans Cable is run by a former patent attorney. Whoopsie. Who put them in the proverbial jaws of the lawsuit, chewed them up, and spit them out mm. in all of this uh, before the case really made it very far. And so the bottom line here is Monster Inc. has not sued anybody since for using the term monster, at least that I could find. Monster Cable, you mean? Monster, monster Cable. Monster Cable, right. Yeah. Thank you. Has not yeah. sued anyone since for using the term well, Of course. Cable. It's a generic term, and so is, there's a lot of generic terms. And there's things that have become generic terms such as... Kleenex uh, and Kleenex, Xerox. Kleenex, yes. And, Xerox. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. and that's, mm-hmm. they've actually tried to sue, I believe, sue a long time ago, but you can't. Kleenex is a generic term. So you know what this means, right? You're a loser. No points no, for Denise. No, Todd takes the, the lead. lead. Oh. Mr. Cunin steps out Todd in front. Todd steps up. What He's got 32, 31, 27. 32, 31, 27. Yep. Those of you who are first joining us, this is... an odd-looking is... person. <laughs> <laughs> That's just... Oh. And next time... I thought okay. I was counting yours. <laughs> next time on, on Case or No Case, dental... Malpractice. Okay. That's right. Malpractice. As it's Todd and right. Denise are looking at each other, laughing and making funny I gestures. Said, I say nothing. I, I know nothing. <laughs> We're going to talk about, speaking of funny gestures, Michael Jackson. Okay, look. <laughs> hey, come on now. Look. We, he, he passed away in 2009. Yeah, I mean, Can I hate to say it's it. Been almost can the guy, years. Can the guy just please die? You know, it's just, they won't peace? let him die and rest in peace. You know, it just... It is, I guess that it, it, what's going on is, did you know after he passed away, his record sales increased, everything increased, yeah. and the yeah. value of his estate increased after he passed away. So does that mean that, Todd, you're going to be wealthy uh, makes after you, makes you, you die? Wonder, makes you wonder if he's really even gone or if this is just some ploy to increase. I mean, that's what artists do, right? The, the value of your art increases once you pass. So. Right. He and Jimmy Hoffa are probably hiding out sure. somewhere. Or Todd's cats are going to be very wealthy sometime. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you, you wonder when you go in and you see a, a life insurance policy that the cats are, you're named and the cats are the beneficiary. And it's like, hold on. You don't have opposable thumbs. How'd you sign up for that one? <laughs> so <laughs> It works. This is what's interesting. We've discussed this many a times. If you go to our website, you can find the former discussions on this case. This is about two individuals, James uh, Safechuck and Wade Robison. Now, you could see pictures of them. Apparently, the family was friends with Michael there's many pictures of these kids as young kids around Michael Jackson at his Neverland ranch. And so what happens is um, 
multiple lawsuits while he's alive come against Michael. I'm going to talk about those lawsuits, how these apply in, and they their testimony at those lawsuits while they're in their 20s, and how Gavin Newsom, again, it's California, changes the law that throws this in a tailspin. We'll be back. We hope you stay tuned for Radio Law Talk and remind you, you can hear us live every Saturday from 9 to noon on radiolawtalk.com. And of course, you can also hear us whenever your favorite radio station plays back the show. And we thank them for doing that. This is Radio Law Talk. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. All advertising for legal services on Radio Law Talk is strictly for the state or states in which the advertiser is licensed. For more information, go to radiolawtalk.com. Jason Ross back here with Fred Penny, managing attorney from Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers. Now, Fred, what type of cases are you dealing with now, and what sets you apart? Jason, we help people with all types of personal injury cases. We're former insurance company trial lawyers. We understand the other side, which gives us a distinct advantage over our competition. Remember, we don't get paid unless we win. That's Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers with locations throughout California. For a free consultation, go to pennylawyers.com or give them a call 1-800-616-4LAW. That's P-E-N-N-E-Y lawyers.com. This is Denise Dirks. We can represent clients in divorce, legal separation, child and spousal support, custody, termination of parental rights, step-parent adoptions, guardianships, and even conservatorship matters. Call 1-877-886-7186 for a consultation. The law offices of Denise L. Dirks provide family law services in Northern California. When the law affects your family, call 877-886-7186. The family of attorneys at Denise L. Dirks is here to help. Hi, I'm Frederick Penny of Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers. I bet you're tired of hearing lawyer commercials. So just relax and listen to music for a few seconds. When you or a family member has been injured, call 800-616-4LAW or see us at pennyandassociates.com. See, that wasn't so bad. Concussion Medical Clinic knows active people run the risk of the concussion. Soccer, football, even a simple fall can lead to a brain injury. Concussion Medical Clinic can test you before you start a sports program so they can have a baseline and more quickly diagnose a concussion should one occur. They also offer expert witness services if you're involved in a concussion case, and their specialty is the treatment of concussion. So if you have suffered a concussion and want the best concussion care available, give Concussion Medical Clinic a call, 916-259-4043, 916-259-4043. Concussion Medical Clinic. The cost of getting rid of garbage is high, and recycling products is lucrative. If you're a business or know of a business that needs an individual compactor or baler, call Northwest Compacting at 888-201-0911. If you already have an industrial compactor, baler, or shredder and need service, don't forget to call Northwest Compacting at 888-201-0911. Northwest Compacting, your full-service industrial compacting and bailing company. Read more about them at northwestcompacting.com. Many women have so many clothes in the closet, but then we go to get dressed and find we have nothing to wear. So- ah! We've all been there. We all want to be comfortable and fashionable at the same time. And it's difficult to find clothing that makes that task effortless. But at Letty & Company, you can find trendy, comfortable clothing that is affordable. Things you'll want to wear every day. Shop with a purpose online with free shipping. Just go to lettyandcompany.com. lettyandcompany.com. I'm going to quick quack car wash, get my car washed, make it quick quack, pretty shiny, sexy, just because I want to don't drive dirty, going to get my car suds in the quick quack car wash. It's the quick quack, quickest and the cleanest by far, we're talking three skinny minutes sitting right in your car, wash a hundred feet of cloth, washing your car at the quick quack car wash. Any Honda, Mazda, Ford, or Chevy, Sauber, Cadillac, quick whack them spruce her up just like that. You'll be happy looking snappy. You'll be glad you was at the quick whack. Car wash it on the web and go to don'tdrivedirty.com and see where you got your closest quick whack in the local area. Get in your car. Get in your truck. 
Get on the road, come visit the dock. Quick Quack Car Wash, where your car will always leave happy, guaranteed. They take pride in being clean and green by conserving and recycling the water they use only at the Quick Quack Car Wash. Is this real life? Oh, come on. You're listening to RadioLawTalk.com. And now back to your host, Frederick Penny. Yeah, so remember the uh, this James safe check. Meet, the first time he meets Michael Jackson is on that Pepsi ad. If you see the Pepsi ad, it's that little kid that wants to be like Michael Jackson. That's James safe check. And that's where they first meet. They become friends. And, and the family becomes friends with him. And then Wade Robson, for any of you that are fans of, there was a show on Fox called So You Think You Can Dance. It was supposed to be the dancing equivalent of American Idol. Mm -hmm. And Wade Robson was one of the coaches for the dancers and was in several seasons, several iterations of that show. So, you know, he was one that... When he came out, I remember when he was he, one of the choreographers. Choreographers. When he came out, I remember when he did so, him saying that this is going to negatively impact my career in mm-hmm. Hollywood to talk about this. And you know what? It did. Yeah. It did. But Fred, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. But no. I think he felt like he had no choice. So just a quick, quick general timeline, just FYI. The timeline is December 86. That's when J- James Safe Chuck meets Michael Jackson on the Pepsi ad. And then August uh, uh, 1993, Los Angeles police begin the investigation of Jackson on child molestation issues. September 1993, uh, a family sues against Michael Jackson. LaToya, remember, says abuse allegations are true in December 1993. She goes against Michael. In February 2003, the Living with Michael Jackson documentary airs in the U.K. and the U.S. I remember that. Remember that's when he's sitting with the children and talking and saying it's okay. Talking about sharing his, sharing bed, his bed with children. All that stuff. And then they and, and the they, most beautiful thing in the world. Yeah, and then November 20, 2003, police booked Jackson on child molestation charges. Now, this is – and then February 20, 2005, Jackson's criminal case goes on trial. All this is happening, but during the time period, these two individuals – and I don't remember. It's James Safecheck and Wade Robson. Yes. They they testify – I believe they were in their 20s, and they, and they come in and say, Michael Jackson did not molest us. And that's their test. I'm being very general. Those of you who are like, oh, no, that's not exactly true. Go back and read it. But generally speaking, that's what they testify to in general. And then now they change their mind and they're saying, and it's kind of like after this this big HBO, um, I mean, this case came before the HBO documentary that we discussed where Michael Jackson's estate was suing the HBO to say, you know, and, and, and jo- stop them. Yeah, from for finding, uh, leaving Neverland, right? Leaving Neverland to tell them not to, to, to play it. And they actually, it, 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 they, uh, they went ahead and leaving, Lever- leaving Neverland was played on HBO. That's right. And, and just for information, the criminal trial you're talking about occurred in 2005. 2005. Right. It was in Santa Barbara. And yep. Robson, for example, testified that he had gone to Michael Jackson's house, that he had slept in his bed, but denied the molestation. And uh, right. I believe Safe Chuck, I can't remember if he testified or not, but that was going to be his proposed testimony if he had testified. Right. June 13, yes. 2005, Michael Jackson acquitted of all criminal charges. That's right. That's right. He's acquitted. And then he dies June 25, 2009, uh, age 50. So now we've got this case here, and, and we were talking about this, about ex post facto laws and, and what happens when a statute of limitations has already run and then a law is passed and it revives it. Let's back right. up. Well, let's sure. back, exactly. Yeah, let's back up. We need to back up and explain what ex post facto sure. laws are. Well, let's back up and see what happens here. I want to back up even further. So what's happened here is we went over this case, and the courts threw out this lawsuit, this molestation lawsuits, by uh, James Safecheck and Wade Robson and, and threw it out on the on the statute of limitations. It's too late, basically. Because in, the, in this time, the statute of limitations was they had to be 26 or less right. in order to bring any kind of allega- any kind of a claim for um, childhood molest. Their age. Their age, Their has age to had to be 26, 26 or, less. or less. And both these guys were over 26. A lower court throws it out. Then what happens? 
Then it's appealed to the appellate court. And in the process of the appeal, the state legislature, that's California state legislature, extends that statute of limitations to the age of 40. And then Governor Newsom signs that into law. So there's a new law that comes up during the pendency of the appeal case. Right, right during the appeal. Right, which is after the trial part. Now it's in the Court of Appeals. And so the Court of Appeals then reverses the decision and sends it back to the trial court to address the fact that now there's a longer statute of limitations. And so I think that, and Denise, you brought some ex post factors. I wonder if that's constitutional because the case had already been decided. Uh, the judge had already ruled. So let's talk about yes. what's ex post facto. Ex post facto is part of the Constitution, and nobody shall suffer and have property loss uh, based upon ex post facto laws. That means laws that are enacted in the future that are going to be go retroactive back right. to um, conduct that's in the past. And basically that's kind of a fast description of it. Now, it's easy to sit here and say, well, wait a minute, why did they file this lawsuit when they were clearly over the age of 26 when they filed? And and, and there's a statute here that says if you're beyond 26, you can't file. It's because there's an, there was originally an exception to that. And the exception was if it was related to conduct that you didn't know occurred at the time and... Be, and, and you filed within three years of learning. So what the original lawsuit was alleging, again, this is against the corporations, right? So what they alleged in the original lawsuit was that members of the corporation, MJJ Corp, whatever, whoever the defendants were, were actually engaging in activities that facilitated Michael Jackson's conduct. Their claim was, we didn't know about that until recently, but upon learning about it, we filed within three years. So it's basically a discovery extension. Yes, and so that's why they filed filed, and the court denied, dismissed it, and then this new statute comes in, and everything you're saying is correct about whether or not a new statute that extends the statute of limitations can revive an old case, but the Court of Appeals did an interesting analysis, and when we come back, I'll talk about what the Court of Appeals said and why this did not violate ex post facto And we got to talk about the distinction between the the lawsuit against the estate, a criminal lawsuit, and the lawsuit against these uh, corporations, because yes. they're very different. This is coming out of the second appellate district. Uh, we're going to talk more about it. Interesting. And then we'll talk about Miley Cyrus case settles. All right. So there's a lot on the agenda here on Radio Law Talk, and you will not want to miss even one minute of it. So stay tuned because there is much more Radio Law Talk coming up right here, wherever you're listening, whether it's on RadioLawTalk.com or on your favorite radio station. Thank you. We'll be right back. All advertising for legal services on Radio Law Talk is strictly for the state or states in which the advertiser is licensed. For more information, go to RadioLawTalk.com. If you are trying to quit drinking or doing too many drugs, listen to me. You don't know me and we'll never meet. I had a problem like you once. I drank and used to party a little too much till it got out of control and almost ruined my life. I realized I needed help to fix my problem before it totally destroyed me. If you've tried to fix your drinking and drug problem and you know you can't do it alone, you need to call the National Treatment Advisors. They'll immerse you into a 30-day program to replace your old habits with new habits and totally change your life. And if you have PPO private health insurance, the entire program may be covered. Fix your problem right now before it gets any worse. Get clean. Call now and learn more. 800-296-1252. Warning. Don't let your business get left behind in what is likely to be the biggest economic boom in recent history. If you need to build for your business to grow, call General Steel today for a pre-engineered steel building designed for your needs. No wasted space. Steel prices are expected to rise, but you can still lock in your price on a General Steel building. And you can still save as much as half the cost and time of conventional construction. As much as half. But you must call now. If you need a church building, office, warehouse, 
warehouse, manufacturing space, retail space, or more. Call General Steel today. You can still get the General's 50-year structural warranty and General Steel quality, all at a price you can afford. So don't let rising steel prices put your project out of reach and stop you from making your company great. 800-617-9312. 800-617-9312. 800-617-9312. That's 800-617-9312. Hi, my name... This is Radio Law Talk. And now, back to the show. This is some really interesting stuff. I, I just Maybe we're just weird because we're lawyers, but we're talking during the break about all the... The legal, you know, wrangling that's going on with the courts and the lawyers on this Michael Jackson uh, lawsuit that's revived by the the second uh, appellate district in California. And I don't think it needs to be mutually exclusive. We can be weird and it can still be interesting. That's I true. Mean, I well, mean, we maybe. are. We're interesting weird. <laughs> well, your point, you know, your point certain right there. Exactly. All right. All right. See, I, I, I am I am on point with that. Okay. So. <laughs> So the question here that we that we teased going into the break was, wait a second, wait a second here. If there's a statute of limitations and it, it says it's got to be filed by the time somebody's 26 and then now they're past their 26th birthday, they shouldn't be able to file. And can a new law really come in and revive old cases like that when a potential defendant is like, okay, whew, I've made it past. And the answer is... Well, it depends, and this is what the court said in the opinion that came down on the 3rd of January. The court specified that in cases where a statute of limitations has changed, the issue about what they call retroactive application, which is going back to talk about cases that have passed, generally speaking, absent any language in the statute that was just passed, if there's nothing in there about it, then no, it does not. It does not go back and revive an old case. But if a statute is passed and the legislature specifically says this will apply to cases where the statute of limitations under the old law has already expired. So if, retroactively, basically. If, they, if, they say, if the legislature says this will apply to those cases to revive them, then it does by virtue of the language of the law. Putting aside the argument about whether it's constitutional, that'll have to be litigated down the road, but the law says... Please overturn it, Supreme Court. The law says, yes, it does, and this change to the statute of limitations, extending it to the 40th birthday of the alleged victims, specifically said it revived old claims. But we're talking about civil. Let's talk about the difference between criminal, civil. This is very important. Criminal, so this applies to civil court. This, this does. And there's differences between civil, probate, and criminal. Wait, the laws that. are very different as to them. There are probate laws that apply to things in probate, such as you have so many, you have so much time after the estate is opened to file a claim against the estate. Now, this does not, this new law in civil is not applying to probate laws, it's only applying to the civil portion of this, which was the suit against the corporations for what their employees have allegedly or had allegedly done in the past. And no, that, or no. That yeah. precipitated or at least had some involvement in the child abuse. Um, so, so therefore, the estate of Michael Jackson. The estate of Michael Jackson, the suit is not revived as to the estate of Michael Jackson. So now the estate is being brought just against the two corporations of Michael Jackson and, in essence, the employees. I don't know if it specifically named any employees, however. That's something that I couldn't get in in my research. Todd, did you come up with anything on that? I I didn't see anything. The thing about these cases is is it never made it past the demurrer phase. I mean, we didn't get into litigation or anything. A demurrer is basically where a potential defendant looks at what is actually in the filed complaint and says, hey, if everything here is true, you still don't win because it's after the statute of limitations and the trial court agreed. Said, yeah, this just doesn't apply. Everything you've alleged here 
you can't win because of the statute of limitations issue. Well, that's now been wiped away, so it's got to go back to square one. And it's still, they still may lose. They, this they, is not something that means it's an assured win. Um, and, and we don't know the ages of these two gentlemen right now currently, too. If, wow, if so one of them, them yeah, if one of them is over 40, Well, they've for obviously got to be under. I, think I, I don't think either one of them is. I think they were in their late 20s at the time they filed in 2013, so they would still be in mid to late 30s at this point. But you talked about ex post facto. Yes. Now that's a that's a provision um, in the Constitution. Nobody shall be subject to ex post facto laws, which essentially says that if you do something that is not illegal at the time that you do it, they can't come back and pass a law making it illegal. And now you have liability for it retroactively. You might have liability going forward on it, but they can't go back and prosecute you for something that had happened in the past, which apparently was an issue with the colonists and the crown prior to the Revolutionary War. But they can't do that. So how does something like this get around ex post facto laws? How does Here's when we talked about the break. People have to register as a sex offender in California under Penal Code 290 if they commit certain sexual offenses. Some folks have objected because they say, look, I pled to something in 1995, and at the time, it wasn't one of those offenses that I had to register for. And then the legislature passed a new law in 2002, including that offense, and now the law requires me to register. Well, I think I'm going to interrupt and you. And that, that is a lot of lawyers at that point. The good lawyer, I, I know this happened in a, in a couple of attorneys I heard. They will also put it in that settlement agreement that they do not have to register. So if the law passes, then it says in the agreement they don't have to register. Well, except that. Some of these pass and say, notwithstanding any agreement, you still do. Th those are very difficult to enforce. In fact, I tried that once as a prosecutor to agree it, a case that wasn't registrable. is still not a registrable offense. And the agreement that I had with the defense was if it ever changed, right. you'd be able to withdraw your guilty plea. The court wouldn't authorize the plea. Well, Would, or, wouldn't accept it. Or how about it just says, I, I agree, and you will not have to ever you know, uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, register. Th those, those have... They they, those don't have a lot of success. But my point in all of this is when that happened, when it happened that 2002 made a previous crime now registrable and the person that played in 95 said, wait a minute. Yeah. Should this? Should, what about ex post facto? It was appealed. It went before the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court said, you know, registration really isn't a punishment. It's just a condition that is associated Crazy. with Crazy. your conviction. And because of that, this doesn't fall under ex post facto because it is not criminal punishment. And It's if, like a probation term. It, not, well, not, but not, it extends beyond probation. Yeah. And it's, see, here's my argument on that. Not in today's society. Maybe back in 1960 and 70 when they didn't have the internet and everybody can look up some... Again, I'm not, I'm not for any of these people who have done these horrendous things, but I'm just about, you know, you've already pled to it, you, this is what you've agreed to, and now ex post facto, they're going to apply that in today's society with the internet and all that's going on with the computers and the iPhones and, the, and social media, it, it is punishment, my Yeah, it, but it, that's this punishment. is the answer here. Why this does not, the, the Michael Jackson case does not impact the ex post facto restriction is because we don't have a government actor. We This is a civil case, right. exactly. and right. this does not imply constitutional rights in such You're a way. Right. Right. So I guess we're back to that part where in potentially during the process of this, they're getting notice of the extension of the statute of limitations, and notice is enough. Yeah, th there's no... And if the law says it's going to be retroactive, and it's a civil case... Mm -hmm. There's, there's no infringement on their liberty. That's right. There's infringement on their, or their quality property. of life or condition, but there's no infringement on the liberty or anything like that. They weren't denied due process. Uh, that's a great point, Denise, because constitutional rights, we always forget this, constitutional rights always, always require a governmental actor, a governmental party trying to take something from a private citizen, and that's not attendant here. All I yes. know is Cal went with the finger like this, like, yes. this is getting boring. Let's move on. I well, agree. it's a good topic. You've discussed it very well, yeah. and I'm and sure you've got other it. fascinating <laughs> we, things. We it. <laughs> Miley Cyrus is settling. There's a $300 million lawsuit, copyright lawsuit against her that we've discussed on this show before for 
a, a Jamaican songwriter named Michael May. She's claiming her We Can't Stop, um, which is one of her big famous songs, um, that that she took it from this guy. His name's Florgon, and he's the, like this song that he made was like that called We Run Things was the number one song in Jamaica, and they're claiming he claimed that she basically took his song and lyrics and beat and made this big hit, I guess a number one hit, We Can't Stop. And by the way, I don't know anything about the We Can't I remember playing it, but it, uh, whatever, whatever, Cal. I, but the point is, it's you know, settled. I, I thought it wasn't that good a song, really. Yeah, but, yeah and it's yeah, settled, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and everything's good, and we don't have to talk about it anymore. So there you go. That's what Denise like, I don't understand this. It doesn't matter. It's settled. We don't have to talk about it anymore, and we're going to move on. It's a floor gone conclusion. It's a floor gone conclusion. <laughs> and we have one more update, which is the, the Moms for Housing. Yes. They lost their case out of Oakland, guys, okay. and right. so the judge decided that they don't have a possession right to that house that they had occupied without permission. Go back to our uh, our uh, podcast and you'll know what we're talking about. All we'll squatters see beware. Yeah, oh, we'll see you hour three. <laughs> now stay well, tuned. Well, we'll stay yeah. tuned. Yeah, yeah, we've got another oh, 15 minutes. Oh, yeah. we got 15. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta hang on with us another 15 minutes. And I'm the one that had the brain injury. Stay tuned. Oh, <laughs> There's more, <laughs> There's more Radio dead. Law Talk coming brain right dead. up right here with Fred, Denise, and Todd. And of course you. Don't go away. All advertising for legal services on Radio Law Talk is strictly for the state or states in which the advertiser is licensed. For more information, go to radiolawtalk.com. Not all law firms have extensive experience in all areas of the law. It's wise to look for firms that have knowledge and understanding in your particular area of concern. So go to prolawfirms.com. They have listings of attorneys in key areas of practice, such as family law, estate planning, personal injury, bankruptcy, and so forth. When you're looking for a lawyer that has extensive experience in your particular area of need, go to prolawfirms.com. That's prolawfirms.com. ProLawFirms.com is not a law firm and does not endorse or recommend any specific law firm. Concussion Medical Clinic knows active people run the risk of the concussion. Soccer, football, even a simple fall can lead to a brain injury. Concussion Medical Clinic can test you before you start a sports program so they can have a baseline and more quickly diagnose a concussion should one occur. They also offer expert witness services if you're involved in a concussion case, and their specialty is the treatment of concussion. So if you have suffered a concussion and want the best concussion care available, give Concussion Medical Clinic a call. 916 259 4043. 916 259 4 043 Concussion Medical Clinic. Jason Ross back here with Fred Penny, managing attorney from Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers. Now, Fred, what type of cases are you dealing with now, and what sets you apart? Jason, we help people with all types of personal injury cases. We're former insurance company trial lawyers. We understand the other side, which gives us a distinct advantage over our competition. Remember, we don't get paid unless we win. That's Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers with locations throughout California. For a free consultation, go to pennylawyers.com or give them a call 1-800-616-4LAW. That's P-E-N-N-E-Y lawyers.com. This is Denise Dirks. We can represent clients in divorce, legal separation, child and spousal support, custody, termination of parental rights, step-parent adoptions, guardianships, and even conservatorship matters. Call 1-877-886-7186 for a consultation. The law offices of Denise L. Dirks provide family law services in Northern California. When the law affects your family, call 877-886-7186. The family of attorneys at Denise L. Dirks is here to help. If you're one of those independent people who wants your own business and you love food service, we just might have a great opportunity for you. Iceberg Drive-Ins. Iceberg is famous for its thick shakes and delicious food. We lend you our supply chain and expertise, and you can potentially have a thriving, successful, fun business that your customers will love. Iceberg Drive-Ins has some prime areas available right now, so if you're interested, get in touch with us right away. Go to icebergdrivein.com and click on the Contact Us button. Iceberg Drive-In. Ready to grow with you. I've got to get my car washed, this dirt, it just won't do. But I don't have no time today, I don't know what I do. Man, I know this place right down the road. Quick, quack, car wash. Uh -huh. Hop inside, let's take a ride and watch this cat and shine. Just come and see, I guarantee your ride will steal the show. Come on, quick, quack, car wash. Don't drive that dirty car. Uh -huh. Quick, quack, car wash. They'll have you looking sharp. 
Even in the hustle and noise of this modern world, we feel the pull of the forest to walk under the canopy and feel transformed. National forests are essential to life, majestic and grand. They clean our air, supply drinking water to millions, and provide homes to countless wildlife. They fuel our imaginations, inspiring us to think big, and now's the time to do just that. Fires and natural disasters devastate our forests each year. That's why we're replanting millions of new trees across the country. The Arbor Day Foundation needs your help. We've heard the call of the wild and we've answered. Scientists, foresters, volunteers, and members, together we can preserve and protect our heritage and legacy. We must act now so that the generations of today and tomorrow can continue to depend on our forests. Visit arborday.org. See how you can help. Are you serious? If you pay my fee, I'll take your cake. This is Radio Law Talk. And now, back to the show. So, Denise, we were going into the break, and you were talking about this case uh, out of Oakland, California, about squatters and, and that the mother's lost. Explain a little bit more so folks know what was going on and, and what was the issue. Well, the, the issue was, well, first you have to start from the fact that there is an incredible amount of homeless people in Oakland. Um, and there's a lot of homes that are sitting empty in Oakland. They're not housing anyone because there's um, large corporate investors that have come into Oakland, invested in these homes, and they're just going to turn them around, fix them up, turn them around, and resell them for profit. Flip them. They're going to yeah. flip them, and that's the idea. And so they're not renting because there's too much liability associated with renters. And so these mothers that were homeless, actually, they didn't break in. They're very particular about saying they didn't break in. But they obtained occupancy in a home, and the large corporation, of course, uh, wanted to get them out because they, they're just basically squatters at that point, and they're in violation of the property owner's rights. So the moms filed a kind of an injunction request to try to, to deem that they are a um, that they were that they had a right of possession of this house so that they could stay in that house. And what the court found was that uh, while they're sympathetic to the cause of the homelessness and especially homeless families with children, they found that the property owner's rights were far beyond um, the rights of the homeless people and that they had to leave the property and the property owners are going to win. That lawsuit, that's at the trial level. Believe me, there's lots of funding for the moms for homes, and they're going to actually um, appeal it as well. They were asked, why don't you buy the house? And the seller said, we will not sell it until it's empty because we have to go in a sure condition. Under California law, you have to disclose everything that's wrong with the house that you know about. And they said, well, we can't even get in there and inspect it and make these minor repairs. We don't know what they've done to this place since they've been squatting in there. Yes. But people ask that first question. Well, why didn't they just buy? Well, the city was even making an offer to the owner to buy, but the, uh, the, city, uh, the owner said, no, that's not enough. Um, we have plans for this building. So they reported that they had some kind of a, um, you know, they were going to help out a, ch a children's um, group for some reason and make that a children's center. And they had all these charitable plans for sure. it as well. Good for them. Right. So they deserve to get what's the market rate for their property. It's, it's very yeah. concerning about the precedent that would have set if the decision was anything different, that the government could come in and tell you how much you could charge for your home, that the government could come in and force you to sell to somebody that didn't, that they could tell you what the fair market value of your home was. And but, that the rent is controlled at a certain level. I exactly. Now, there is a provision in the law called adverse possession. We talked about this last week, right? right. You can go back yeah. and listen to our podcast. And if they want the home, they, they can follow that but if that doesn't work, they can't sue to say, look, that's the way the law is, but it didn't work. So can you give us a different way? That just doesn't work. And so. that's still squeezing that into a very narrow window, as it they is. say, you know, in a situation like that, because they were asked, well, why don't you rent a place? Uh, you know, if you if, if you have enough money to come in and pay these taxes and do all these things that would qualify under adverse possession, why don't you rent the home? And the women was I just read this in the San Francisco paper yesterday and they said, well, by the time you put in first and last months and and we've been around to f 12 or 15 homes, all they do is 
collect a fee for a credit application. They just keep the money. Our money gets burned up on mm-hmm. that, and it costs about eight or nine thousand dollars just to move into a rental. It and does? if we had that kind of money, we probably wouldn't need to go this route. Yeah, but they wouldn't be homeless. Said. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So it's, it's a tough situation. It is, and it's one facing big cities throughout the country. But you can't take people's property rights away from them is what that judge is saying basically. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Thanks for the follow up. What's interesting is what you I, I want to talk about IKEA in a second, but go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was, I was just going to do one other follow up sure. on a story that we sure. have done. I want to talk about IKEA after that. We talked about the Nick uh, the, the the Covington High School teen and this was the issue that occurred over at the in front of the uh, Lincoln Memorial in Washington DC was it last year? Last two uh, year ago, two, two years, years ago, ago. Yeah. and this was where the Native American individual was beating the drum in front of the face of the Sandman teen, and media reports got the story wrong, made allegations that the teen had engaged in conduct that he hadn't engaged in, and so the Covington teen, Nick Sandman, filed a lawsuit against a lot of media agencies, including CNN, for defamation, among other causes of action. Other boys that were there, there were about 10 others, also filed lawsuits, but they filed anonymously, used a different attorney than Sandman did. Well, Sandman, this in the last week, has settled his case against CNN. What and, was it, a $400 million? Well, what they, he they was after? suing for $275 yeah. million, but the <clears throat> terms of the settlement were not disclosed, which is common. But one thing that we do know is that the attorneys for Sandman said that other potential defendants can now expect lawsuits to be filed based upon this settlement. So I would have to assume it was successful for them somehow. Otherwise, I don't think that they would really be going after others. But the unique thing that happened here is it actually started a bit of a feud between Sandman and the attorney for these other boys who had a lawsuit filed and they were anonymous because that lawsuit had kind of gone by the wayside. But once news of the settlement arose, it kind of revived and gave new legs to this other lawsuit. And the attorney for the other lawsuit put out a tweet or said something along the lines of referring to the person, the celebrity, whoever it was, that said of Sandman... Doesn't he just have the kind of face that you'd like to punch? And he made some public statement about that. Sandman had to reply on Twitter saying, who are you to be representing me? You don't represent me. And you can know why Sandman did that, because if his settlement agreement with CNN or anybody else included a non-disparagement clause and somebody can. Or non-disclosure. Non-disclosure. And somebody thinks that this attorney represents him and is making that statement, that blows up the settlement. Yeah. And so so that's Or they can be held liable for damage yeah. for, mm-hmm. for um We'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens going forward with it, with the other yeah. stuff. Well, that's the update. We're staying yeah. updated. So, sometimes we're ready to go ahead and talk about things by Friday night, and things pop up that evening or exactly. Saturday morning, and that's what we want to bring up. So IKEA, there's these. You know, I've I've heard about this. There's these lawsuits going against IKEA in some of the furniture they make. Some of the dangerous uh, furniture, believe it or not, it doesn't seem dangerous, but when it's around little children. These uh, apparently like chest of drawers were, were tipping and falling on children, and 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 they were dying. I, I mean, and I've seen it. They're really not even that tall. They're like four drawers high, and they're tipping over when a kid you know grabs a hold of it and it tips over. Well, when they pull out the drawer, yes, it's tipping yes. over, so it's front weighted yeah. instead of back weighted. Yeah, and then and then so there's real issues there with 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 these children being hurt seriously, but. I, I guess I don't know how they pass. They die by this falling on them. It suffocates mm-hmm. them. Maybe it's the weight of the of on their chest or something. But there's been a number of them who passed away. One lawsuit was settled. Uh, three families split fifty million dollars between them in a 2006 court case against IKEA. But the latest is the largest, at least known, uh, uh, settlement for the death of a child of 46 million dollars to the parents of a two-year-old. Who died when uh, a, a IKEA uh, chest of drawers tipped over onto the child and passed away? Yeah, it, it, this was a settlement. Obviously, that they, they didn't want to take it to trial. And I'm assuming I didn't. I can't remember. I couldn't see in here. I'm assuming they made it past summary judgment. I can't imagine a settlement yeah. of this amount would be something that would occur prior to summary judgment. Uh, for those of you that don't know, a summary judgment is in essence in the middle of litigation in a civil case where the defense or the pro- or the plaintiff can go before the court and say, look, 
the issues are so uncontroverted that this party should win over this party, and usually it's a request to have a case dismissed. And if a plaintiff can get past the summary judgment motion, can get past the defense's attempt to say, hey, this should just be tossed, that puts them in a much better position for negotiating, right? Yeah, and, and, the, and these, yes, that's exactly right. And these specific uh, items, the, the, this... Uh, the dresser, dresser that fell over? Yeah, they, they recalled them and actually sent out, uh, I'm going to call bolt systems that you can bolt it to the wall. Yeah, anchor, uh, anchor, anchor it to system. the wall. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so they sent over a million of those out. They recalled and 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 and, and a number of them. They just they just just trashed them uh, to get rid of them. But what's interesting is they said afterwards, uh, this is IKEA. We never thought that a two-year-old could cause a short 30-inch dresser to tip over and suffocate him. Which they probably didn't. I mean, that's not very well, they tall. had another dresser that, that happened before. This is the first one of this, this particular size. This is a shorter one. Yes, exactly. And so, anyway, but the, the case settled. $46 million. $46 million. Wow. Well, you know, it's sad all around. That's that. There's there's yeah. no good news about that one. We're going to be back. Uh, hour number three. Join us. And I'm correct this time. It is hour number yes. three. Yes. Dang. Uh, we'll see Hey, you. we want to thank the affiliate in New Orleans. And I'll be there in a week to see you. Cool. That's Radio Law Talk coming to you in in the Big Easy right here uh, where you're listening. Thanks for turning us on. We'll be right back. Don't go away. You have been listening to RadioLawTalk.com, a copyrighted presentation of Radio Law Talk Incorporated. of 50 and considering buying an annuity in the next 60 days, I have some important news for you. Don't buy an annuity until you understand the pros and cons of annuities. A free book to help you maximize your retirement income from television host and three-time author Josh Melberg has been released. This book reveals little-known truths about annuity strategies in simple-to-understand terms. Grab a pen right now because we are about to offer you this free book that unlocks the five little-known secrets we believe baby boomers and seniors should know before buying an annuity. Call 800-985-1813 now and you'll receive a free copy of Josh Milberg's book, Next Gen Annuity Strategies Revealed. As a bonus, we'll also send you a copy of The Number One Mistakes Retirees Are Making With Their Investments Today and a free DVD on how you can get up to 33% more income in retirement. Call 800-985-1813 now. Again, that's 800-985-1813. Employees of J.D. Milberg Financial have the appropriate licenses for the products they offer.